Girls that gave the nice guy a chance, how did it go? Dot. Not me but my friend did. He ended up in jail and she ended up with bruises and black eye. People who have to point out how nice they are to others are flying a gigantic red flag. So my BF was a 22-year-old virgin, shy ASF like could barely make eye contact. He's a total sweetheart and an actual nice human being. He wasn't bitter or hateful. I was a bit flaky in the beginning because I was going through some stuff. He never got annoyed or pissed at me for changing plans and was always easy to be around. He wasn't a nice guy he's a genuinely nice guy. We went out for lunch and he offered to pay for me but only if I agreed to be his girlfriend. You know because he's tired of all these gold diggers. It was Panera Bread and the guy worked at Luby's lol. I paid for myself and promptly ghosted him haha. <laughs> The nice guy was my best friend. He hinted at sex for months, knowing I'm uncomfortable with it and had no interest, then raped me two years ago when he was fed up and touch starved. We don't talk anymore. He begged me to masturbate for him while he drove me home and when I refused, he threatened to rape me and then couldn't understand why I didn't want anything to do with him after that. He was criticizing everything I did. Why do I go to university? Why do I live where I live? Why do I do my makeup? Why do I do popular things? He hated everything that popular people did. Which L wasn't he just had these idea that there are things that popular people do and like and things that only nice people. Which is crazy considering the fact that we were already in our 20s, he was 28. Talking about this pointless unpopular vs popular thing like high schoolers. Also every time he thought I was mad at him, he deleted me on every social media. It was frustrating, tiring, and hurting. So eventually I stopped talking to him and now I'm labeled as popular basic s just like the rest of the females. I proceeded to be stalked for the better part of a decade, and no amount of blunt statements like I do not want to marry you, I am not interested on you, I do not want a relationship with you would deter him. It only stopped when I married an entirely different man. A day or two in, he started talking about how I was going to marry him, be a stay-at-home mom, have as many kids as I could physically produce, and how isolated I would be. He never asked my opinions, that's directly against my life plan and always has been, and was determined to go through with it with only details being my choice. Thankfully got out unscathed, but WTF. The nice guy tried moving into my dorm room after four days. I noped the F out of that relationship. We went to Starbucks one time and chatted and in his head that meant I was his possession and he had the right to stalk me for a year. Basically kidnapped and kept in a basement for 24 hours. Repeatedly assaulted. Told he'd had a vision that I was supposed to be one of his wives and if I didn't marry him he'd just tell everyone I seduced him and was lying about it. I let him think we were engaged until my out-of-state school transfer was accepted, then I bought a plane ticket and disappeared. This is a horrible thread. Where are the happy stories? Dot. Decided beating me was the way to go. Not me and I'm not a girl imau but I had a friend who gave a nice guy a chance. They got married and it went downhill in less than a year. The dude had some major self-esteem issues and sought validation from other women even in marriage. He got caught talking to other women on Facebook, Tinder, etc. and claimed it was therapeutic for his self-esteem issues. The kicker was that we all worked at the same place in different departments. It was like being backstage at the Mori show. He burned my stuff because he loved me too much. I will kill your friends and family to remind you of my love. Da 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 yada dot. Went to high school together, he was 15, I was 16. I cried on his shoulder when another guy turned me down. Been together since high school. Four adult children and four grandchildren. We have had the best life I could ever have imagined. He manipulated everyone who knew me into thinking that I said horrible things to drive them away from me then used my grief from losing my father as a tool for his manipulation tactics. Oh boy, he was emotionally unavailable. Literally valued material objects over human life to an extreme. Openly told me he loved his car more than me. He hated animals. He hit my sister for using his toothpaste. And that was the end of that. So bad. 
I was stupid and 17, he was 29. He tried to convert me to his religion and planned to propose when I turned 18. I thought I was an adult and could make my own choices, and upon reflection I see that it was grooming. Now that I'm close to his age, can't imagine trying to date a 17-year-old. It went really well at first until like one week into the relationship he kept saying how much he loves me and how he can't wait to move in together and wouldn't let me hang around my other male friends. He wouldn't stop texting me and would never leave my side it got really annoying but he didn't stop until I broke up with him, called me a fat whore who no one could love and he's happy that I used to. Cut myself and said I should start again. That was very much a fun realty and ship. I got stabbed. Twice. In the chest. He didn't wash his foreskin and balls, he had visible D cheese, and said achievement unlocked, virginity lost when we first had sex. He raped me while he thought I slept. Oh, and he let all of our friends unceasingly call me A.W. Terribly. The first, and last, time I slept at his house, I wasn't ready to have sex with him and he got upset and shouted you'll sleep with everyone except me. Like, what the actually f? Portraying me as A.W. because L wouldn't sleep with him is some real messed up s was really shocking as we had been friends for years. In my experience, no guy who ever called himself a nice guy was actually a nice guy. So bad. About three months in he asked me for advice on some selfies he took, ick but whatever, I chose one. He never posted it to his Instagram but I thought nothing of it. Two weeks later my friend sent me a screenshot of a Tinder profile and said LSNT this the guy you've been dating. It was him and he'd used the picture I chose as his main picture. I almost gave the nice guy a chance but after he showed up at my house uninvited and made my dad super angry, had a strict no boys allowed rule until hit 18, I was 15 at the time, I gave up. He begged me to give him a chance because we both liked World of Warcraft. That was it. Glad I did give up because the stalking, inappropriate thigh touches at lunch, creepy talks about what he wanted to do to me, trying to convince me to sneak out in the middle of the night to see him, and etc. absolutely terrified me. I haven't seen him in quite a while but I'm honestly still scared to be alone in that county. I have a BF now that doesn't do that but I never go visit my parents without him or stay at their house alone. I'm now 23 and still worry. He stalked me and threatened me at my job. Reminder that we don't even get to see the responses from the girls that got killed by the nice guys. He told everybody I was his girlfriend, one wasn't we were just seeing each other a little bit, tried to strangle me with a necklace after I asked him not to buy me one, he broke my favorite necklace, pulled a knife on me, blew my phone up for four hours some days so that I couldn't even use it, would show up places I was at without telling him would cut himself or do hard drugs ween very tried to stop talking to him, then sent everybody we knew a picture of my booty after I finally cut things off and filed a police report against him. So my dad beat him up in broad daylight and then he finally backed off. He sent my news to the whole school, after he broke up with me. Well, he claimed it was his brother that stole his phone, but still, he gaslit me cheated on me and stalked me after I dumped him. Swell fella. Firstly a genuine nice guy is different than a guy who walks around feeling entitled to women's attentions. I met a genuinely nice guy 13 years ago when we were both in the same post-secondary course. He liked cats, board games, loves his family, wanted kids one day, liked to cook etc etc. Found out later he was often friend-zoned by women he had an interest in, and was okay with that, in fact he expected that we would always only be friends. We have been together for all 13 of those years, married for 7 and have a kid and 4 cats. We are both each other's best friends. Work on yourself. Be nice to people without expectation. Be humble not entitled. Met a nice guy on Tinder. He was really awkward with few social skills, but he had a really cute dog so I figured why not. The entire first two months of the relationship I was terrified thinking I was being gaslit because he was just so nice. I had a history of abusive relationships. Two years later we are engaged, just closed on 8.5 acres of land, and discovered we are pregnant last night. He's still really awkward and his dog is still really cute. 
The nice guy still cheated on me with his EX. We had a messy, volatile on and off thing going for a long time. He cheated on me, as well as the next several girls he dated, then, moved away, developed a hardcore independent streak, and became career driven, while he got with and married one of my best friends. They've been together for 10 years now, married for about 6 and they have a rainbow baby. He seems to have shaped up and we all have. Dinner once a month or so. I was also with a genuinely nice guy at one point. An unfortunate series of life circumstances at the time kept us from officially making a go of things and he got with another girl who ended up pregnant a month into their relationship. They got married and have three children. Out of all the people I was with, he was the only one I would have considered a future with. I was coming out of a string of really bad, toxic, abusive relationships so I promised myself that I would try to find a nice guy to date. Well, I had a first date with this one guy, we'll call him Tim. It was a fine date. He was nice and we had fine conversations. I didn't feel any immediate chemistry, but I was also not used to dating guys who weren't blade into holes so I figured that was why I didn't feel an immediate connection. I told myself I'd go on one more date with him and see if the connection grew in any way. So we go on a second date a week later. It was a short date, we had an early dinner, and I was back home 90 minutes after he picked me up to drive me to dinner. Again, no sparks, but he was nice and I wasn't a bad date. So I told Mijult I'd go on one more date with him and that would be the deciding factor. I was still wrestling in my head with the idea that I was just not attracted to him because he wasn't in a hole and maybe I was just scared of nice guys. Well, on our third date, he asked me to move in with him, offered to put me on his health insurance plan, was uninsured at the time, and told me he loved me. I very gently told him that he was a great guy, but he was clearly more invested than I was, and that it wasn't fair to him, that he deserved to be with someone who was equally attracted to him. At the time he was cordial, but confused, and we parted ways. Next day, he posts a long, long rant on Facebook about how nice guys finish last, girls only want to date a holes, he opened his heart and his home to this ungrateful bee only to be slapped with a rejection. He left it up for a few days, and then blocked me. Regardless of how many times I said I wasn't interested in a relationship, he continued making moves and flirting telling me that he wanted to spend the rest of his life with me and that we were soulmates. He told me that he was having a rough home life, and that I was the only one in the world who didn't think he was creepy for the way he looked or would give up on him. Nobody ever said that he was ugly. He would constantly ask if he was handsome or not, and he was not bad looking at all, just lacking in some hygiene skills like wearing deodorant and showering regularly, and dental care. He seemed really insecure about the way he looked to the point that the insecurity became the most noticeable thing about the way he carried himself. No amount of compliments or reassurance would soothe him. I showed up for his football games and performances to support him, and he never showed up for my plays or finished small tasks that I asked him, as a friend, to complete. Whenever addressed he would break down and say that he was the worst person in the world and that he would die for me. He eventually stopped talking to me and moved on to somebody else. I honestly think he needed more attention and love from his parents and was using the desire for a girlfriend to fill the emotional gap. I feel bad for him, but I'm glad to have some distance. He seemed great. We hit it off and worked through some early issues. He ignored me for days at a time to play video games with his friends, not even a text of hello or sorry, I'm busy. His mom was diagnosed with cancer about a year in, and I moved in with him so I could spend as much time as possible with her and support him as she was terminal. Eight months after she passed away, a friend of mine found his profile on the dating app we met on, currently active with a paid subscription, same exact profile I met him with. When confronted, he said he was just trying to make friends, and that I couldn't count it as cheating because nobody ever messaged him back. We tried to work things out but he was found a month later on the same dating site, by the same friend. I wish I could say that was the end, but I gave him another chance. Over the next year he became the most hateful, miserable man I've ever met and I could no longer mentally handle it. I moved out. Self-proclaimed nice guys almost never are. If you're really a nice person, you don't need to advertise. Then there are nice guys who really are nice, but in an overbearing way. No girl worth being with for the long term wants to be worshipped. 
I did end up marrying a truly nice guy, he made me laugh. He had his own life and didn't expect me to be his whole world, or for me to change my life for him. He didn't play games. He listened to what I had to say and didn't come to me with a lot of assumptions about who I was supposed to be. He looks out for me, but knows I can look out for myself just fine. He's kind and I have never met a person who didn't like him. He doesn't advertise his niceness because there's no need. It would make as much sense as sunshine advertising itself. He had a collection of trophies from girls he'd been speaking to online. His mother fought every argument for him. He isolated me from everyone, and the one time I dared try and hang out with people after class, he spam called and texted then turned up at the location to drag me home. He had a new and expensive hobby every month, like motorbikes, guns, sound equipment, etc. He would pretend to be a woman on the internet to scam gifts from older men. He found pictures of preteen girls on his computer. One reported this, but nothing ever came of it. He started effing his cousin that he'd grown up with. He still sends me emails 19 years later to tell me how great his life is. I knew him for a year before I thought I should give him a chance. Turns out, he deliberately never mentioned the fact that he had two kids because he knew I didn't want kids of my own and he figured there was no way I'd date him if he was honest. I found out because we went back to his apartment, he insisted we sleep on the couch, which was bizarre, but I was too tired to get into it at that point because it was like 3 a.m., and the next morning we were woken up by his 4 and 10 year old children. Turns out, he left them alone all night to meet me at a bar and we had to sleep on the couch because his daughter was asleep in his bed. Anyway, that's when he revealed his whole plan, and I've never been so mad in my life. Partly at the fact that he thought he could like, con me into dating him, but also, what the f. His kids deserved so much better than him as their father. It's been probably almost 15 years and I'm still kind of mad about it. He became very clingy, very quickly. He would text me at stupid hours and get mad when I didn't reply. I would wake up with the same texts on WhatsApp, Facebook, and normal messages, followed by why are you ignoring me? I thought you liked me. I failed exams because he wanted to spend every waking hour with me and I couldn't just study. He would get offended when I wanted to have time alone. Every time I would tell him to tone it down he thought it was because I didn't love him enough. Every time. It's such a shame because we were such good friends before that. After we broke up he turned all of our mutual friends against me. I spent a lot of my college years blaming myself because maybe I was a rude bee to him, maybe I should have been nicer. It was f ed up man. He was lovely, I met him when I was taking art classes at a college, he was doing the class as a second subject as he needed more qualifications to go to university. We had a really lovely first year together, I met his family and they were also really nice people, until... He failed the exam, and I didn't, when he got his results at the same time as me, he went ballistic and said in anger, why do I always have to settle for second choice, and I said that's not true you've, but I didn't get time to finish what I was going to say. He interrupted with, don't think you were even my second choice, you were just available and no wonder why, you're defective so I could be certain no one was going to try and take you away from me. I have a disability, and he was a nasty jealous little bastard underneath that nice exterior. He was nice for a few months. Then came the mental and emotional manipulation gaslighting, threatening to hurt slash kill himself over the most inconsequential things, like not being able to hang out or talk on the phone. Then came the physical abuse, among other things, he ended up trying to kill me twice. I didn't leave because I was afraid he would kill me or my family, since at that point I had been with him for two years. My depression and sense of hopelessness became so strong that I felt the only way out was death, and I started acting out with the hope that he would kill one of us. Finally, in a bout of extreme confidence brought on by alcohol, I dumped him over text and told him to never speak to me or my family again, and that I had reported him to the police and that they were watching my family for safety, not true, but God I regret not reporting him when I should have. Seven years down the road and I still have intense PTSD that impacts all of my relationships. But, I am better than I was, and that's okay with me, because in time I will be better than I am now. I told him I didn't want a relationship, I wanted someone to talk to. I had gotten out of an abusive relationship about four months prior. He said he didn't mind. 
I was also talking to someone else and he knew, his response was as long as I get my time to, we became inseparable. We lived 30 minutes apart but saw each almost every day, not going more than a day. We texted all day, every day. Finally, I asked him what are we doing? And he looked shocked and said what? I'm like what are we doing? We see each other every day, talk all the time, what are we doing? He looked at me, mouth agape and said I thought we were dating so that's how we became a couple. Our relationship was perfect. In every place I struggled, he was strong. Where he struggled, I stepped in. He was my best friend. I didn't believe in soulmates until I met him. We melded together. There was not one day where I questioned how he felt about me and I would find ways to make his day better whether that was getting him water when I saw he was out or making a special trip upstairs to give him a kiss. We were perfect. He passed away a few weeks ago. I'm a rack. But even with this ending, I would choose him. Again and again, without a doubt. I miss him terribly.